Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome back to my channel. So the case that I have for you guys today is a solved one, but it's one that leaves us with so many questions that just remain unanswered. But before we get into the case, I just wanted to go ahead and give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creatives like me. It allows you to explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and just get lost in your own little world of creativity. They have thousands of classes for creative and curious people on topics like illustration, design, graphic art, photography, film and video, and so many more. Most of Skillshare's classes are under an hour with short lessons that fit anybody's schedule and skill level. Working on my doctorate in the medical field and working as a YouTuber, I never thought that I would have time to better my skills in all of my other interests and passions, but Skillshare makes makes it easy. I'm really excited about this class, portrait photography, shoot and edit Instagram worthy shots taught by Jessica Kabisi, a photographer. She teaches us how to pose, use lighting to your advantage and how to turn normal pictures into something really cool and interesting to look at. I have always been interested in photography and taking pictures of my friends and families all with beautiful backgrounds. Part of the reason I moved to Arizona in the first place was to learn how to take pictures of all of the beautiful scenery that the state has to offer and Skillshare has really allowed me to learn more and explore my skills. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they are always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused on wherever your passion take you. It's so cool to see that you are actually getting better at your skills and actually taking charge of learning things that you've always been so curious to learn about. I've been using Skillshare long before they sponsored me because I'm like a sponge. I just love learning more about how I can make better videos, take better pictures, and make better art. I am so excited that Skillshare has agreed to work with me on a video and they have a special offer for you guys. The first 1,000 subscribers that click the link in the description box below will get a free trial of their premium membership for Skillshare so that you can explore your creativity. Do something today that you couldn't do yesterday and grow your skills as a creative. I know I am. Thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so with all of that being said, I just wanted to talk about a few things before getting into the case. This is yet another one of those cases where I just don't wanna see any negative comments about the victim. I don't wanna see any victim blaming. It does involve someone who wanted to go out for a night, but she's a young mother and she wanted to just have one night of fun. And the only person who is responsible for her death is her murderer. So as I've stated in other videos, if you are going to say something rude, disrespectful, or mean, I'm going to be removing that comment. I know some people didn't like it when I say that I would remove comments because apparently that makes me really sensitive or my viewer sensitive, but it's just one of those things I will not tolerate any disrespect or being rude or mean, like I said. Just putting that out there, I know none of you would ever make any negative comments about victims on these videos, but in case you were thinking about it, please refrain from doing so. As always, treat the comment section as if the family is reading every single comment. Even if they never see this video, we still want to make sure that we are being as respectful as possible. The family is already dealing with so much and they don't need random people on the internet adding to that. I'm talking about today's case to simply share a young woman's story and so we can learn from what happened. As with any case that I cover, there are things that we can take from this video to help protect ourselves and help protect our friends and loved ones. So with all of that being said, let's get into today's case. Today, we are going to be discussing the murder of Savannah Spurlock. Savannah Spurlock was born on February 5th, 1996 in Richmond, Kentucky to parents Cecil and Ellen Spurlock. She was described as a kind and loving person and was an amazing mother to her four children, four-year-old Noah, two-year-old Jace, and newborn twins Zane and Zuri who were born in December of 2018, only five weeks before Savannah went missing. She had gone to high school at Madison Central High School, graduating in 2014, then went on to Eastern Kentucky University for health administration. But while in college, she did actually become pregnant with her first child. Because of this, she did end up taking a break from school to focus on her role as a mother and ended up working in the restaurant 
restaurant industry to make an income for herself and her children. Now, from my understanding, her four children were fathered by three men. Her four-year-old and her two-year-old had different fathers, neither of which have been named publicly as far as I have seen, and her newborn twins were fathered by a man who I believe she was currently dating at the time. I'm not 100% sure of that either, but his name was Shaquille Smith. But despite this, she loved all of her children and she was absolutely dedicated to caring for them. She once wrote in a Facebook post, it's crazy how much you can love one person. I will always be there for you no matter what. You have changed me for the better. I don't know what I would do without you. Mama loves you, Noah Blue. Happy birthday, baby boy. Now, around the time that Savannah went missing, according to Savannah's family, she was having a bit of a rough time. She moved back in with her parents, but she was trying to secure a job so that she could move out to her own apartment so she could take care of her four boys. Now, as you can imagine, because of the fact that she was the mother of four children, she didn't get out much. She spent most of her time taking care of her children, but she was young. She was only 22 years old, so she still wanted to be able to have friends and socialize once in a while. So, after spending the day at home with her mother in Richmond on Friday, January 4th, 2019, 22-year-old Savannah decided that she wanted to finally go out for a night out. Again, she had just had her twins a few weeks prior and honestly, she just needed a little break. She hadn't really gotten the chance to socialize or just have a fun night to herself in so many months, which is very common in mothers with newborn children. It's natural to want to go out and get a break from your family, and honestly, it's 100% necessary to your mental health to just get away from your kids for a little bit and have some adult time with some friends. So, that evening, she decided to go out to a bar with one of her female friends who has not been named publicly. At around 10 p.m. that night, she left left her house in her mother's car to go to the other bar in Lexington, Kentucky. Before going to the bar, her and her friend met up with another male friend at his house, and then they parked their car at his house and then switched to a different car so that the three of them rode together to the bar. However, shortly after arriving to the bar, apparently this guy friend had some work issues, so he had to leave the bar. He got a ride from someone to take him home, and he left the two women at there. But then shortly after this, apparently Savannah and this female friend had gotten into some sort of argument. So after having this little argument, at some point the female friend left the bar and at some point that night, Savannah started hanging out with three other men. By 2.34 a.m., Savannah is seen on surveillance video leaving the bar with two unknown men. She was going to be riding with them while the third man that she had been hanging out with was going to drive separately. Then by 3 a.m. on Saturday, January 5th, Savannah's mom, Ellen, woke up at home and realized that Savannah was not home, so she decided to go ahead and give her a call on FaceTime. Savannah answered the FaceTime call, and at that point, she was in the car. Savannah's mom recalls seeing her sitting in the front passenger seat of the car with two other people in the car. She basically just told her mom that she was having fun, hanging out with some friends, and said that she was going to be home in a couple of hours. Savannah seemed very happy and calm in the phone call, but Alan could tell that she was intoxicated and it was clear that she had been drinking. However, according to Alan, this call put her at ease because Savannah was keeping her in the loop of things of everything that was going on that night. But by later that morning at around 8 a.m., Alan had woken up only to find out that Savannah was still not home. Now, like I said, Savannah was a very responsible mother and she was not one to stay out very long. Then, on top of this, Alan had also told Savannah that she needed to use her car that day, so Savannah knew that she needed to be home at a decent time to return the car back to her mother. She wouldn't have just been out and left her mother with no car. So, when Savannah was still not home at this time, Ellen was immediately concerned. She tried calling Savannah several times to try and get a hold of her, but every single call was just going straight to voicemail. So then, Ellen went ahead and called one of Savannah's 
best friend, Sabrina, to ask if she had known where Savannah was, but Sabrina also said that she had not heard from her. After this, Ellen knew that something was definitely wrong, so she went ahead and reported her daughter missing. By Tuesday, January 8th, Richmond police put out their first post regarding Savannah. They put out the surveillance image of Savannah and the two men that she was last seen with leaving the bar and made a plea to the public for help with identifying these men. The post said, the Richmond Police Department is seeking the identity and the whereabouts of these two individuals. The white male was seen leaving the area in a black Chevy S10 pickup. In addition to this, police, family, and volunteers all hit the streets to search for Savannah. They passed out hundreds of flyers and searched anywhere that they could to find any possible evidence that could point them in any direction of where Savannah was. Her loved ones were desperate to find her and her two older children just could not understand why their mom was gone and they woke up crying every single day just saying that they wanted to see their mom. I think the twins were with Shaquille at the time and then her two and four-year-old were being taken care of by Sabrina who was the godmother of all four children. The family did their best to show the kids pictures and videos of their mother while still celebrating all of the milestones and even had a birthday party for Savannah even though she was gone. Now by January 22nd, police had identified the two men seen leaving the bar with Savannah as well as the third man that was with her at the bar but was driving separately. They didn't immediately come out with the names of these men but they did execute a search warrant on the home of one of these men's parents in Girard County. During this search, police seized several items, one of which was a car. Then, a few days after this, police actually came out and said that they had questioned all three men and that none of them were suspected in her disappearance, so none of them were being charged. They had continued their investigation and by early February, police were able to come up with a timeline of where Savannah had gone after leaving the bar that night. Police had said that after leaving the other bar, she had traveled around 40 miles to a home in a rural area of Girard County with the men that she was seen leaving with. They also revealed that Savannah actually did not know any of these men before meeting them at the bar, but they didn't say how they knew that or how she met them in the first place. Like I had said earlier, police came out and said that Savannah had been driving with two men while the third followed behind them in a different car. Police said that they found evidence that Savannah had gone to this home, but no evidence that she had ever left. They also said that after questioning the men that she was with, they told police that Savannah had left their house on foot that morning, but that was the last time that any of them had seen her. But... Other than this, for the following couple of months, police didn't come out with any further information. They followed up on many leads and continued their searches. In early February, the Cajun Coast Search and Rescue Team announced that they were going to be traveling to Kentucky to help with the searches. This organization has a specialized canine unit that works on all sort of missing persons cases all over the country. They searched a specific cornfield as well as this bridge that they thought would lead them somewhere. They also focused their searches on a pond in Girard County as well. But despite all of these efforts, nothing was really found. But then, by July 11th, six months after Savannah was last seen, police received a tip that completely changed the course of the investigation. A man had called to report that he had smelled a foul odor in the yard of his house on Fall Lick Road in Lancaster, Kentucky. This man turned out to be the father of a 23-year-old man named David Sparks, David Sparks also happens to be one of the men that Savannah was last seen with at the bar on the night that she went missing. Police arrived at the home to search the entire property and pretty quickly, they discovered the body of a young woman who was buried in a 19 inch deep grave in their yard. And pretty quickly, unfortunately, this body was confirmed as belonging to 22 year old Savannah Spurlock. She was found naked and her feet had been bound with tape and her body was folded over. Also in the grave, they found a rug as well as some garbage bags. For the time being, police arrested David Sparks and charged him with abuse of a corpse and tampering with physical evidence since they were not able to confirm that he truly was the one who murdered Savannah. So by July 15th, 
15th, David appeared in court for his probable cause hearing and that is when he told his side of the story of what happened that night. He told police that Savannah went to his home that night along with the two other men. He said that after hanging out for a bit, the two men eventually left, but Savannah slept over. She had slept in David's bed while David slept on the couch. He said that the next day, Savannah woke up and asked David for his address so that she could get a ride home. He said that he gave her the address and then just went back to sleep. He said by the time he woke up, Savannah was no longer there and he didn't know where she went after that. However, at the hearing, detectives brought up how Savannah's body was found with a rug in her grave. They revealed that on that same day, David had actually texted his sister asking her where she got the rug from because he was looking to buy a new one for his room. Also, when police had searched his room, they found that the rug was in fact missing. They also found blood inside of David's closet and when the blood was tested, it was confirmed as belonging to Savannah. So, the judge decided that there was probable cause for this case to move to a grand jury and at this time, he was pleading not guilty. Were you present when her body was unearthed? I was. Tell his honor what you saw. Uh, Your Honor, I observed uh, with the assistance of the FBI special uh, or evidence response team, uh, the body was exhumed from a clandestine grave. Um, that body was uh, concealed within multiple black trash bags. The body was unclothed. The feet were bound with tape and uh, the body was in an unnatural position. And by that, I mean her head and feet were in the same position. She was folded over in half. Okay. Did you find any... Um Anything lying next to her body, against her body? I did. It, what did you find? It was uh, what I would describe as an accent rug, rectangular in shape, grayish in color. Okay. Did Mr. Sparks, in any interviews he's had with the Richmond police or yourself, ever say, wait a minute, I remember uh, she had a little fall and there was some blood in my bedroom? He did not say that. Uh, did he at any time t tell you that when she left, he was missing a rug? He did not tell me that. Did he at any time, during any interview with yourself or with the, the Richmond police, to your knowledge, state, wait a minute, she didn't leave I went, before I got up. She was still there and it had uh, a little accident coming down the stairs. No, only as uh, I stated earlier, he stated that he woke up to her standing outside the bedroom asking, you know, where she was at, uh, as if she was going to arrange some transportation home. He falls back asleep, never had gotten off the couch. When he wakes back up nearing noon, she had, she was gone. Okay. But by August 28th, the Girard County Grand Jury indicted David Sparks on charges of first-degree murder. Initially, he was pleading not guilty and was being held without bond as his case was pending. But then, by December of 2020, David Sparks actually accepted a plea deal and pled guilty to the murder of Savannah Spurlock, admitting that he had acted alone. He did this in order to avoid a life sentence in prison. Instead, he could only be sentenced to as many as 50 years. In court, his plea deal was read aloud. It said, quote, during the early morning hours of January 4th, 2019, at 118 Price Court in Girard County, Kentucky, the defendant, acting alone, intentionally caused the death of Savannah Spurlock. After doing so, he bound her legs and wrapped her body in plastic bags. He later transported her body to the home and buried her body in the yard behind that residence. He did so with the intent to elude apprehension for murder and to impair the evidence's availability in future proceedings pertaining to that crime. After this hearing, David Sparks was sentenced to 50 years in prison. But other than this, we really don't know anything else about what really happened. Police have been very tight-lipped about her actual cause of death, and David has not come out to say what really happened that night. We still don't know why he killed her, or when, or anything else about what happened. The family has come out and said that even police don't even know why David killed Savannah, and according to a Facebook post that they made, the autopsy was inconclusive in most aspects. Police have their ideas, which they have shared with Savannah's family, 
but the only person who truly knows what happened is David. So the family just has to live their lives knowing that this man took their daughter's lives, leaving four children without a mother and won't even tell them why. It's just such a sad and horrific case and I do wish we knew more, but the family has said that they have found peace in what they do know and I think that's all that matters. They actively post on the Remembering Savannah Facebook page and they advocate for so many other missing persons cases there too. It's just so amazing to see. I can't even imagine how painful this all is for the family and especially Savannah's children. They have to live basically their entire lives without their mother and the youngest ones won't even know who their mother was. It is so, so horrific and I can't even imagine that kind of pain. My heart absolutely goes out to Savannah and the rest of her family. If you want to keep up with this case or if you just want to learn more about Savannah, make sure to go ahead and check out the Remembering Savannah Facebook page. All I ask is that if you do, please leave nothing but kind words. I saw a post on their Facebook page talking about how they won't accept any victim blaming and they were very disappointed to see what people had to say about Savannah and it's absolutely disgusting to me that they even had to go out of their way to say that and make that known. But I know that you guys are amazing and understanding and you know that the only person responsible for Savannah's murder is David Sparks. He murdered her, nobody else. He admitted that he acted alone and that's the end of that. So again, please leave nothing but kind words if you do decide to check out her page. So that is where I'm going to end today's video. I know this was a little bit of a shorter one, but there's just not as much information about this case as I would have liked. As always, if more information comes out about Savannah's case, I will keep you all updated. But for now, we at least know that there's someone sitting behind bars for ripping this young mother away from her four children. But either way, if you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. And don't forget that the first 1,000 of my subscribers that click the link down below will get a free trial of a premium membership for Skillshare so that you can explore your creativity. Don't forget to go ahead and follow me on Twitter. That is where I keep most up to date with any case that I cover as well as Instagram. And if you have absolutely any case suggestions, please make sure to go ahead and send them over to my email at rachelshannoncases at gmail.com. With that, I hope you guys have a great week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.